Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the latest regarding Vitor Roque, Gavi, and also speak about other several players that does revolve around Vitor Roque. So if you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. I'm happy that you guys are here. If you guys are Barcelona fans, this is going to be the channel for you guys. And I hope you guys just enjoy this channel because I think that it's very important for us to be together. It is, yes, a very difficult time for many for many Barcelona fans and for Barcelona itself because we're not going through a good moment. So I think that it's it's good for us to, to come together and really just talk about the state of this club and just support each other and uplift each other. And, and most importantly, uplift these players to make sure that they bring in the best work possible. Because I think that Barcelona have the capability to do some great things this season, regardless of how many things have been going on within the squad in, in terms of like injuries, in terms of like some other issues. I think that Barcelona have everything right they have all the capacity in the world to do something special so let's continue to support these players i know that lately in the past two or three weeks it, it has not been the very best barcelona have not been performing at a high level we have been losing we have been tying we were supposed to play better and you know we have all of these other injuries and i know that it can get very stressful but like i've said i hope you guys do enjoy this video and if you guys do like this video please like subscribe and also comment it's going to help me and, and my YouTube channel to perform better and get get these videos out to more people. So let's talk about the latest regarding Vitor Roque. And it says here, according to Roger Torreo from Mundo Deportivo, that Barcelona have a free path to register Vitor Roque in January. They can also use 80% of the space vacated by Gavi due to his injury to register the Brazilian striker until June. And next season, he will be able to be registered under normal financial fair play. Barcelona received his positive news this afternoon, but want to have it in written before taking Vitor Roque's registration for granted. Now Barcelona must just make the final decision whether they want to register Roque in January or sign another interior midfielder. So, you know, like that last question, right? So the reason why that last question is coming up is because, you know, we lost Gavi. And I think that Barcelona's midfield continues to thin, especially knowing that, you know, any one of these players can get another injury through the season. It could be Frankie, it could be Pedri, it could be Gundogan, who has been playing almost every minute and, and has been featured in almost every game. It could be Oreo Romeo, it could be Fermin Lopez. Our, our midfield is thinning. And we especially lost a lot of energy in our squad because of Gavi, Gavi's absence. Like, keep in mind, and this is according to Stats Bomb, that Gavi applies the most pressure on opposition players among all players in La Liga. He averages 37 pressures on opposition players per 90 minutes adjusted for the possession, meaning that Gavi is the best player defensively in terms of, you know, like tr trying to intercept the ball and making sure that the opposition does get pressured when they're about to receive the ball. So the fact that we lost Gavi for the rest of the season, Barcelona lost a lot. Gavi was everything. He was the heart. He was the the engine of Barcelona's midfield. And so I can get why many many people within the club are debating whether they should bring Vitor Roque in or bring in another interior midfielder to make up for the absence of Gavi. Now I know that there is no other player out there in Europe that can that can give out the exact same things that Gavi does bring, but we need more depth, I would say. So, to be very honest, I know that it does seem like a problem from, from afar, but I think that if Xavi Hernandez can rotate these players correctly, in terms of Frankie, you know, uh, Pedri, Gunogan, and Fermin Lopez, and Ori Romeo, I don't think that there's going to be, there's there's not going to be such a big problem. I think that the main focus should continue to be Vitor Roque and bring him in as soon as possible. Because I think that with Lewandowski not having any real competition in the, you know, in, in his position, bringing in Vitor would be... Uh, much better for him because I think that if Xavi can say hey look Lewandowski I'm gonna have to sit you down because Vitor Roque has been better than you that's go that's only going to uplift Lewandowski even more you know I see Lewandowski's situation very similar to Alejandro Balde I felt like Alejandro Balde got too relaxed in the left back position because he knows that Jordi Alba is not there anymore he knows that Marcos Alonso can't take his position which is why we see Alejandro Balde so relaxed and and you know he doesn't feel no pressure because he knows that whatever does happen whether he performs at a, at a three at, at a you know three at a 10 performance right four out of 10 performance it doesn't matter he'll play in the next game and he'll continue to play for the full 90 minutes and so i see i see the same thing with Lewandowski. regardless of how bad Lewandowski has been playing and regardless of his form Xavi hernandez will not drop him because like who is he going to drop him like with like is it going to be Fernand torres is it going to be joe felix like Xavi hernandez has not shown signs of like any of those things that Fernand torres can take his spot or joe felix can take his spot both of those players can play in the, in the number nine position but you know 
it's just not gonna happen. And Lewandowski secretly does know that. Even at the age of 35 years old, he, he knows that and he doesn't want to back it up. Like he doesn't want to try to exceed his previous form from the previous game. He just continues to play at a very, I would say, flat level. And that is why I'm telling you guys, right, that Vitor Roque's you know, introduction in January would be so, so interesting for, for the whole squad and especially for Lewandowski. And I also do think that maybe Lewandowski might not even be with us next season. You know, you may say, but Kevin, you're only saying that because, you know, Lewandowski is not at his best. And once he scores 30 to 40 goals by the end of, of, of this year or 2024, you know, you're going to be saying something different and you're going to want Lewandowski for an, another season. But I honestly think that Lewandowski will be leaving. And I say that because of the form that Ansu Fati is in and what he has been providing centrally. Because the Zerbi is using Ansu Fati centrally. He's using him as a number nine, a deep number nine. Uh, very similar to like Kane's role. And I think that with if Ansu Fati continues to score and provide such a great level in the Premier League, Xavi's going to want to call him in. He's going to say, look, I have seen your performance. I see how you like to function now and I see your new position. Why don't you come in? And I promise you, you will be having a good amount of minutes and you'll be fighting for the spot with Vitor Roque. And both of them, right, we can have Ansu Fati and Vitor as our number nine options next year. And I think that it's important for Vitor to come in January so he can be with Lewandowski for at least six to seven months so he can learn a few things or two from Lewandowski. Because at the end of the day, Lewandowski has the experience. He may not be in his best form now, but he definitely has a lot of experience. And he knows what it's like to play in the Champions League. He knows what it's like to perform at the highest level of football. And so I pray that Vitor Roque does come in like no matter what in January. And he comes in and he and he fully fires on all cylinders. He scores goals. Because remember, before the injury that Vitor Roque got into, he was in, in, a, in an amazing form. He looked way too good for the Brazilian league. And if you guys don't, also don't know, Vitor Roque has already recovered from his ankle injury, so he's okay now. He's not like in 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 the hospital or or any of that right he's good he's 100 percent. most likely he will be, he will be playing on december 7th and then after that i think that Br the brazilian league is over and then from there he'll move to fc barcelona if barcelona again they have the capacity to register him to register him and apparently it does seem like that's going to be the case with Gavi now being out. And I also believe that it's going to be important for Vitor Roque to, to do well because I think that if he does well and you see him at a good level at Barcelona for the first six to seven months, I feel like that's also going to going to help Barcelona leverage the signing of Messino, who is also named Estevao William, right? That's his real name. They just call him Messino because he really does play like, I guess, Messi and he he's a huge fan of Messi and also a huge fan of FC Barcelona. And I don't know if you guys know, but Real Madrid are also getting into the race for the player. They they want him. I don't know why Real Madrid is like that. Whatever Barcelona likes, uh, apparently Real Madrid likes. They just want to steal the player just because. Just because he's linked to FC Barcelona. Like, for example, the last time this happened was with Arda Guler. Barcelona showed interest to Arda Guler. And then, like, two days later, Real Madrid is like, we also want Arda Guler. We'll, we'll, we'll pay maximum dollar for Arda Guler. And now look at him. Now now look at, it, at his position at Real Madrid. And it doesn't even seem like Real Madrid is interested in using him. They just wanted to bring him in only because they wanted to weaken Barcelona for whatever reason. I, I, I don't know what's their problem. I don't know why they want to follow whatever Barcelona is doing but that just shows me that Real Madrid don't have a, a single sporting plan but you know going back to the conversation I think that if Vitor Roque does well he scores goals in the first six to seven months you know things are exciting maybe if Barcelona win La Liga that calls for the for the signing of Messino because Messino has said that he wants to play with Vitor Roque at Barcelona and I think that bringing in that Brazilian duo young Brazilian duo right between those two players Vitor and Estevão William Barcelona can build on top of that and, and it can also give the Healthy competition to La Minha Mal. Because do you guys know Messino is only 16 years old? Are you freaking kidding me? Or like 17 years old? He's just so young. So I hope that does end up happening. I hope that ends up being the game plan. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one.